Hey friends, this is Lisa for the fifth installment of the conversation about light workers. So today I'm going to talk about light workers who are actually anchors and activators of light. So, but before I get into that, if you have any interest in experiencing what a light activation might feel like, I'm encouraging you to join me for a free two-part guided meditation series. The first part's going to be Monday tomorrow, uh, December 14th, the second part on Monday, December 21st, both at 8 p.m., totally free via Zoom. There's a link down below where you can register and get all the information so you can engage in this opportunity. You'll kind of see more about what this conversation is all about if you participate in that. But today, I want to talk about anchors and activators. There are certain people that you know that when they walk into the room, the entire like energy or dynamic of the room shifts. It's like it uplifts. It's like they walk around carrying their own little brand of sunshine. And it's like whenever they come into a room or come into your, you know, into your space, you just feel warmer. You just feel lighter, right? These are people who actually anchor more and more light into their physical bodies. And then they share that wherever they go. Now, the truth is, any single one of us could do that. Any of us, because we all have light within our bodies. And when we focus on and intentionally work to amplify our light, then we can anchor more and more of it in and take it with us everywhere we go. I'll talk a little bit later about how to do that. But there are people who, who just through their being, just the way they are, whether they intentionally do it or whether it's just they let the sun shine from inside of them out, they make a difference in the lives of other people. They make a difference in how you might feel. Maybe you're that person that when you walk into the room, it's like people stand a little taller. They look a little happier. They seem a little brighter. You might be the person who's bringing that kind of light not only within yourself, but then activating it in others. Because that's another thing that people can do. They can actually either intentionally or even unintentionally, they have the innate power to activate or amplify dormant light within other people. So we all carry light. Sometimes that light just needs the switch flipped on you know, or the button push to turn it on, whatever. And there are people that part of their reason for being, whether they know it or not, is to actually amplify and turn that light on, provide that catalyst. That's really what it is. It's more of a catalyst for other people. Ultimately, we're responsible, you know, for holding our own light, turning it on and, and keeping it on. But there are some people who can make that easier or like show us where the switch is to flip on all metaphorically of course but where they have that capacity to help awaken other people awaken other people to their spiritual journey awaken other people to their own inner light to help fan the flames of that inner light for other people now both in the anchors and activators category it's not just people that they have the capacity to work with the light with. It's also places. So many of um, the light workers who do anchor or activate light, you know, sure, some may work with people or even animals. Others actually work with like the energies within the earth or the energies surrounding the earth. Um, so some of you have maybe heard of like ley lines. Um, you know, or, or light grids that surround the earth. These are just, it's it's kind of like our bodies have energy meridians and, and chakras within our bodies that are um, spinning wheels of energy, you know, just, just pathways for energy and light to move. The earth actually has the same, you know, similar things as well. Pathways for that energy. Then in addition to like those pathways, there's also portals and vortices in the earth, which are just places where, 
the energetics are such that more energy can enter or the energies are, are like magnified and heightened there. Now that can be true for the light. It can also be true for that which is, is not light. And so some light workers will work with these portals and, and vortices or with the meridians within the earth or even the light grids to work to activate and amplify the light capacity um, and the way that light can get in and work within those areas or to completely guard out darkness. So this is an area that um, when I first started waking up to all this stuff, I would get like divine assignments and my divine assignments always had to do with <laughs> with activation and, and anchoring, often having to do with activation of um, working with light grids, which are like sacred geometric shapes like think of like a geodesic dome or something like that but like around the planet so these these sacred geometries surrounding the planet that related to various um things or frequencies or energies that were happening on earth i'd love to go into more detail about this at some other time because this the whole you know area completely fascinates me um but that was one that it kind of you know, I kind of had to put the logical mind on hold you know, for a little bit and kind of put it on a shelf and then go, well, wait, wait a minute, what's this all about? But it was absolutely fascinating. So there are, are some places where um, the energetics are just heightened. So a lot of people will think like the, vor the vortices or the portals around like, say, Sedona, Arizona, or even Taos, you know, in, in Egypt, for sure, Peru, you know, other places that are considered um, sacred significant energetic kind of hot spots on the planet um and we can work with the energies there you know even this last time when i was in in egypt i was directed to go into a crypt underneath an ancient temple by myself to like shift the energies in a portal that was underneath this particular temple. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. But what was wild is that in the process of doing that, in the process of trying to, you know, work with that, that particular, that particular portal to really anchor in the light and activate more light there and transmute the darkness that was going on there and kind of shut out the darkness from being able to use that space to do nefarious things um it was just another example of how light workers come in all shapes and sizes and focused on a whole ton of different things you know i've tried to talk about five different kinds just in this little series and there are so many more and if there are others that you all know about and want to share and talk about gosh i would love to to hear about it as well um, but anchors and activators really are people who seek to bring more light to the planet, to share light in such a way that it helps lighten up others, either people or spaces or places as well. And the truth is, as I mentioned before, we can all be activators and amplifiers and anchors of light. And, you know, first we have to focus on doing that for ourselves, you know, doing it personally before we can then, you know, share it with the rest of the world. But to do that, think about what brings you joy. Every time you choose something like joy, or you choose gratitude, or you choose love or compassion, or things that bring us together instead of separate us, anytime you make a choice, for those kinds of feelings or those kinds of ways of being, you are anchoring in more light into your physical body. You are fanning the flame of your own light and amplifying your own light capacity and your ability to share that light with the world. So like today, <laughs> it snowed in Oklahoma, yay! First time in I don't know how long that we've actually had a decent snowfall here. So what did I do? <laughs> well. I went out and I made snow angels. I went out and I got my Jeep and rode around, you know, with no top on the Jeep. Not to try to appease a child who wanted to go play in the snow, because quite frankly, my daughter's 17. She's like, I don't want to get cold. You go have fun. I did this just because it brought me joy. It brought me joy. 
I was cheesing so hard from smiling so big. If my face would have frozen like that, as my grandma used to say, <laughs> it would have been like permagrin because I just, it was fun. I was having fun. And yeah, I might be not exactly a spring chicken anymore, but you're never too old to just go do something that's fun, to have some fun, <laughs> to bring the joy, and then to be grateful for the opportunity to do it. And then maybe to actually share that a little bit with others. Because every time you choose joy, every time you choose love, that you choose compassion, that you choose gratitude, that you choose these higher vibrational feelings and ways of being, every time you choose these higher frequency states, you anchor more light within yourself. And then anybody that you come in contact with, your kids, your spouses, your partners, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your whomever, pets, you know, anyone you come in contact with is going to benefit from that, whether they know it or not. You know that when you're in the presence of someone who's holding a lot of light, you just feel better. You just feel better. Now, sometimes their light might irritate <laughs> your little demons, right? And when that happens, that's a great opportunity to kind of look inside and go, whoa, what's going on here? Because it's true that some people who hold a lot of light are completely annoying <laughs> to other people. Completely annoying. But it's typically because it's an irritant against something within that other person that's out of alignment with their own soul. The more you go through life and the more you choose to align with your soul rather than align with the ego, to align with love rather than to align with fear, every time you make that choice, conscious or otherwise, you hold more light. You're like the torch bearer for other people. You're like the, the, the light holder, the lantern for the planet. And right now, that's exactly what our planet needs, is more and more people choosing to hold as much light as possible and to work with that light in a way that's uplifting not only for their own life, but for like everyone around them and the entire planet. I'm hoping that through the course of this like five part series that maybe you saw yourself somewhere in here. Maybe you saw the descriptions of light working that somehow applied to you. Maybe it was through, you know, the first day talking about those who have been through the darkness, who have worked through the shadows, who have dealt with amazing amounts of life's crap and found the courage and the tenacity and the will and the faith to keep moving forward into the light and to now help hold that light to show other people the way through as well. Or the second type of light worker that we talked about, which were those that can hold space for healing, for those who can hold space for growth in other people. Because sometimes it's in holding the light for, you know, around others while they're seeking to heal, while they're seeking to grow, that they can start seeing their own blind spots, that they can start in training their energy up so that growth and healing is actually possible. Maybe it was the third kind of light worker we talked about, which were those who are out there to bust up the systems, to shine a light in a way that exposes the hidden agendas that enslave us and keep us, that keep us down, that keep us disempowered. That is a hard job, but maybe that's something that, that you have been doing or seeing other people that are doing that. Maybe it was the fourth kind of light worker, you know, the kind that, what was the fourth kind? I can't even remember. <laughs> Somebody remind me what the fourth kind of light worker was. Um, or maybe today, you know, this idea of activating and anchoring in more and more light so that other people can benefit from it as well. If any of these feel like they apply to you, or if you've seen any of this in, in the outside world, let me know. I would love to hear your examples 
Holly, hi, I'm seeing you. You guys went sledding today up in Maine. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I think part of the deal with all of this is a willingness to lean into what light is. You know, so often it's very tempting and easy for us to lean into what light is not. All the drama, all the separation, all the fear, all of the, you know, negative what ifs, all of the lack of joy, all of the overthinking, all just all the all that doesn't feel good. That's leaning into what is not light. We can choose to lean into what is light. We can choose that. We can choose to lean into the love and the gratitude, the appreciation, the joy. We can choose to lean into the compassion, to those things that bring us together rather than those things that separate us. And when we do that, when we choose that, not only do we increase the light that we carry, we increase the light that we're able to share with others, and we increase the overall amount of light on the entire planet. That's a pretty cool thing. That's a pretty cool thing. And it's not like it takes that much effort. It's not like you have to go out and get a master's degree, you know, and how to hold light. It's just making the choice. Can I lean into joy? Can I lean into love? Can I go have some freaking fun already? <laughs> Can I wear my pajamas while being on a you know, Facebook Live video? You know, why not? Why not? If it brings you joy, then why not? I'm encouraging you today. Our world needs your light. And it can come in a whole lot of different varieties and a whole lot of different ways. There are so many ways to be a light worker, a light bearer, so many ways to bring your light into the planet, onto the planet, into your own life and the lives of others. But it starts right here. And it starts by choosing what you think. It starts by choosing how you want to feel. It starts by choosing how you show up in the world. It starts by allowing yourself to lean into joy, allowing yourself to lean into those things that feel good because that's where light resides. Sure, sometimes we might feel kind of awful you know, to help promote light, but light's never gonna ask us to be miserable or to be sad or just any of that stuff. When we can turn toward the joy, sure, sometimes we might get angry. Sacred rage is a thing, you know, and sometimes that can help propel us forward into even more and more light. But ultimately, what is the end goal? What's the end goal? Is it greed? Is it power over people? Is it accumulation of more stuff? Is that the end goal? Well, that's not really light. If that's your end goal, cool, you know. But that's not really where light resides. But if the end goal is stuff like gratitude and connection and love and empowerment and helping lift other people up, and leaning into joy, having fun, enjoying life, experiencing quality of life, if that's the end goal, if that's the way we can be right now and feel good about life right now, regardless, you know, of, of whatever else, those are the kinds of ways that we have the opportunity to align more with our soul and to bring more light onto the planet. I would love to talk more about this with anybody who's interested in talking. But I really do hope if you're interested in experiencing a light activation meditation, again, please do use the link and sign up for the two free guided meditations I'm leading tomorrow, Monday um, at 8 p.m. Central, and also the following Monday on the 21st, which is going to be, um, you know, the winter solstice and the, and the date of this wild cosmic alignment of planets. There's going to be some really powerful energies. Tomorrow um, is actually a new moon and a, and a solar eclipse. So that energy is going to be really potent tomorrow for the meditation. And then you know, this massive alignment going on on the 21st. That's the reason I chose those two days to do these, these conversations, these guided meditations. But I do hope that you will join in, that you will join me. Um, some people are anchors and activators of light. 
It just so happens that's one of the things that I do. And I love the opportunity to help show folks the light switch, you know, to, to bring more light into their own life, to be that kind of catalyst for people to go, whoa, <laughs> this is what holding light feels like. This is pretty cool. So if that's something you might be interested in, in please sign up it's going to be over zoom it'll be fun 30 minutes that's it totally free anyway i hope that this series has been somewhat illuminating <laughs> for you if you have any questions or if you have other thoughts about other other light workers that exist you know i would love to hear those and we'll dive into those too until next time have a great evening <laughs>